G'day everyone, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to do a box squat and also sort of flow that into why they're important to do. And I think it's a really, really good exercise or a great variation of a squat exercise for you to try. If you're someone who has any form of knee pain, whether that be meniscal issues, ACL problems, maybe you've got an arthritic knee in there, your patellofemoral joint stuff, um, uh, patellar tendonitis, whatever it might be, if you're having any discomfort in that knee or even the hip and the low back, Sometimes it's nice to try different squat variations to protect those areas, but also still get those really important functional benefits from doing a squat. Um, as we know, squatting is a foundational human movement. It's a movement that we should all master because it bleeds into so many other things, whether it's you know, walking, running, going up and down stairs, um, you know, lunging, all that sort of stuff. The, the basic tenets of being able to do a squat filter into so many other different things so if you can master being able to squat properly without pain and really well uh, then you'll, you'll get those benefits in you know, other areas of your life which is really important so but as I was saying if you're getting some discomfort with squatting or it's not really something that you feel comfortable doing because of pain or because something's stiff or tight or it clicks or it cracks or whatever a box squat can be a really good variation and for me personally as a physio um, I find box squats are really really great for people post-op so if you've had a, a meniscal tear and you've had a, an arthroscope or you've had a, an ACL issue and you've had that repaired, uh, you know, whether it be a rupture or a partial rupture or something, um, a box squat is generally an exercise that you can do far earlier than a regular squat for one really simple reason. And what that reason is, is when we do a regular squat, um, it's really easy for those shins at some point to translate forwards that knee comes forwards over the top of the um, over the top of the shin over the top of the foot and what that does is as that shin translates forwards the knee gets loaded up with a lot more anterior shear so as that sort of tibia and the femur go forwards you get this sort of shear going forwards off the top of the knee which can be the thing that irritates a lot of meniscuses and you know arthritic joints and acl issues and things like that but when we're doing a box squat, instead of ending up in this sort of, um, sort of breaking that horizontal plane a little bit more, a box squat allows you to keep your shins more vertical for longer. So you still get a little bit of translation at the end, but it really allows us to load up that knee in a, a much more respectful and gentle way um, that most regular squats and, and even lunges to a degree um, don't do as well. So again, if you've got some knee issues, I'd highly recommend trying this because it could be the thing that allows you to keep squatting, allows you to keep building your quad function, your glute function, your core strength, and even just maintaining good depth in your squat for day-to-day -day life. So, so we want to talk about how to do that. Now, it's really, really easy, <clears throat> but the, the basic tenets are the same for any squat, where the first thing that we have to make sure that you do, the first two things that are sort of build the foundation of a good squat, is you've got to have your feet straight, and you've got to create that external rotation through your hips and ankles, uh, to create a really stable hip joint. And the reason why we want to do that is because if we have our feet straight, it allows us to create more stability at the hips, more stability at the ankle and the knee than it does if our feet are turned out. And we've done a video on this before a little while ago now, and I'll link it up here. But the basic idea is that if your feet are turned out, the more you turn those feet out, the harder it is to create the same rotation um, because there's a mobility thing that comes into play, but also functionally, your body can generate more stability and force with those feet straight than it can with your feet turned out. And you can try that at home, where if you have your feet straight, and again, making sure that your big toe stays on the ground, we don't want to lift these, these feet up, so your feet are stable, but you're creating that external rotation through the hips and legs. You'll feel something working through your hips. If you turn your feet out and try to do the same thing, you just can't get the same access to that, um, to that similar strength and function that you could if your feet are straight. So again, we want to make sure that your feet are straight. We want to make sure that you've created that rotation, that external rotation through your hips, knees and ankles for a stable platform to build upon. And then what we want to do from there is when we've found a, a seat height that benefits you, and I nearly forgot this, but we want to make sure that the height of your seat is reflective of how much depth you can squat. So for me, I'm relatively flexible. I'm not perfect, but a regular seat height like this is fine for me. If you're someone who still experiences some discomfort with a box squat or you don't have the mobility yet to go to full depth, then just choose a higher seat. So that could be a bed, for example. It can be a regular chair. It can be a kitchen chair, whatever it might be. But we just want to make sure that you have a height that allows you to maintain great form 
um, without sacrificing that technique just for depth. So again, the height's dependent on how you feel. Obviously, if you're not sure, start high, do a couple, and then just work your way down. Even if you have a regular seat and throw a couple of cushions on top of it, doesn't matter, a couple of books will work. Um, but we just want to find a height that works for you. And then the really important feature to remember when we're doing a box squat is with those feet straight, those knees are out. We want to initiate that box squat by taking your bottom back. So we're imagining that what you're going to do here is you're putting your bottom back like you're going to sit down on the seat. And then you want to reach this point where you're relatively vertical like you're sitting down. But you don't want to lose that activation when you get here. So when you get to this point here, you don't want to get floppy and relax. You want to stay active so that when you come up again, you're maintaining tension in that system the whole way through. And what you'll hopefully notice as I'm doing this is if you watch my shins, my shins aren't really translating forwards much. Because my hips are going back, it allows me to hinge from my hips and then eventually hinge through my knees as needed. And there might be a little bit of translation forward at the end, but essentially as I'm leaning forwards, I'm engaged, I'm coming back up again. It's a very strict, very relaxed, um, you're not moving a lot uh, beyond just the depth of the squat. Like, there's not a lot of extraneous movements going on on top of that. So, so as I was saying, the ability to, to keep a, a vertical shin for as long as possible, there may be a little bit of forward translation um, for some people. But one of the, the other crucial things that I wanted to point out about a box squat, and this occurs for every squat, is you can tell, I don't know why I'm puffing, I always puff in these videos, um, you can always tell uh, how good someone's mechanics are, generally by looking at them front on. Because a lot of people when they squat, and this goes for any squat, not just a box squat, is when they get to a certain depth, you might find that the knee or a knee might start to want to kick in a little bit, we obviously don't want that. We want to make sure that if your feet are straight, your knees are rotated out, that you keep those knees hinging through the same plane the whole way up and the whole way down. If you start to get into a point where you feel like you start to kick in and cheat a little bit, then you've most likely reached a limit of your flexibility somewhere, most likely ankles, most likely hips, depending on the person. So we want to make sure that if you get to a point where you start to squat and you start to dump in a little bit, then you've gone too deep. And if you can't correct that, and get to the same depth, then you need to don't go down as far. So it's really important that when you're doing this to protect the health and function of your knees, hips, ankles, and back, that we keep that form relatively strict. Um, so again, that's basically a box squat. Um, it's a really, really good, uh, what's the word? It's a, it's a nice alternative to a regular squat. It's great for building function, obviously getting on and off a chair, even though chairs are relatively um, unnatural, you know, we've invented chairs, they're things that we've added to the world, um, you know, keeping us in that 90-90 position for hours at a day, but we need to get on and off that chair really um, a lot throughout the day, so being able to squat with good form and every time you sit down is a great chance to practice a box squat, um, you know, if you're someone who needs to, you know, push up with your hands and things like that, try and avoid that, just try and lean forward a little bit more before you do that. And you really find that most of the, the movement, most of the activity is gonna go through the areas of your body that need that activity to go through. So you're gonna strengthen your hips, strengthen your quads, your core's gonna get a workout at the same time. And it's a great way, as I said, to take the load out of that knee uh, and put it more onto your hips. But as I said, it's great for any knee discomfort, any hip discomforts, and a lot of low back stuff, provided that you're staying within the realms of your mobility, and you're not going too deep, and you're trying to keep those sort of those principles that we mentioned, you know, ticked off the whole time. So feet straight, knees out and staying out the whole time, uh, hinging backwards from your hips and trying to keep your shin as vertical for as long as possible, staying engaged when your bottom hits the, the, the seat, and then sort of reversing that as you go back up again. So, um, so hopefully that was interesting, hopefully that was helpful. I'd highly recommend anyone with any knee pain who's struggling with regular squats to try that. And let me know in the comments below if that is you. Um, you know, what knee pain are you dealing with? What are you uh, what are you struggling with at the moment? And I try to reply to as many comments as possible. Um, obviously, I can't give out too much specific advice um, you know, or direct, um, direct diagnosis without seeing you guys, but hopefully I can give you some general directions to where you might need to look or where someone might need to look on your behalf in order to solve those problems. So, um, so that's it for me today. Um, I'm at a, a beautiful uh, camping ground in Malibu. Um, and then I'm planning to do a few, uh, a few videos on location over the next few months potentially. So 
Um, hopefully they'll be enjoyable and interesting, at least a different backdrop to what you're used to uh, with me sitting cross-legged on the floor. So um, so appreciate you stopping by. Um, please leave a like if you found this interesting. Share this to your friends if you've got knee pain. Um, it's a really important exercise to be able to do. And yeah, please subscribe to the channel, follow along, and hopefully we'll turn this into something fantastic. So uh, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.